up everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Riley thank you for joining me this week this week we are going to talk about the five most common mistakes people make when first getting into carpet pythons so let's do this one of the first mistakes that people make when they're first getting into carpet pythons is that they fail to recognize that carpet pythons aren't just one animal there's an entire complex phylogenetic breakdown of species subspecies associated morphs within those species and subspecies and just how that all plays together so most people will get random carpet pythons for the first time and try and breed a bredley with a popwin first of all they breed at two different times of the year second of all that's a complete species hybrid and I hear it more often than you'd be surprised to know because it's 2021 and people still don't know what the heck a carpet python is so the biggest mistake people make is getting into these animals without having any proper history knowledge or anything and uh, they don't get the complete carpet python or they don't get a good book anything that'll teach them you know kind of the ins and outs of what they really need to know so uh, it pays to do your homework and research because if you are going to make that pitfall, you're probably going to make a bunch of unwanted mutts and hybrids and then you're going to be sitting on all those babies because nobody wants them. So, first mistake, not understanding the complex phylogenetic makeup of the carpet python group. This right here is a tiger IJ, also known as a West Papuan carpet. And this is a male produced by Eric Burke. Thank you, Eric. He's a stud. All right. Next mistake people make. Let's go. The second mistake people make comes from a, a good heart. It comes from trying to do the right thing. And that's when they try to take a little baby carpet python and put it in a big enclosure like you see right here right away. Not all snakes are going to acclimate to that much exposure and open space. And they're going to be very, very vulnerable, stressed out, and uh, probably not eat, not do well. And uh, you'll be hitting people up like me, trying to figure out why your carpet python isn't eating, all these other problems that will come from that. So that's why you will see uh, breeders and other people like myself starting babies off in small, more appropriately sized enclosures. So right out of the gate, they feel nice and safe and secure. So problem number two putting your baby snakes, your new snakes, in a massive enclosure too soon. The third mistake that most people make, not just with carpet pythons, but with any Australian reptiles, is a, a poor assumption that everything from Australia likes it hot and enjoys it hot. And that's just not the case. Animals from Australia live in extreme climates, but they have adaptations to endure those extreme climates finding pockets of cool, little microclimates, all of these different techniques for survival. So just because you look online and it's 150 degrees in Alice Springs doesn't mean your Bradley need to be kept at 150 degrees. In fact, heat will kill your, uh, your reptiles and snakes much faster than cold. So if you're trying to dial something in, err on the side of less and work your way up to your happy point. This is where thermostats come in. This is where research comes in. This is where understanding your animals comes into play. You never want to cook an animal too hot. You will cause irreversible brain damage. They certainly need heat to digest and a thermal gradient so they can cool off and warm up as needed. But the biggest mistake I see, especially with bearded dragons, honestly, is people getting them and thinking they need to be 110 degrees night and day. And then they ask me why their dragon died in seven days. So... The third problem is overheating because they think everything in Australia is hot. And that's just not the case. In fact, in order to breed Centralian pythons, you need to drop them down into the 50s. They need it cold. So keep that in mind when getting into carpet pythons. You're not setting them up in a sauna. Not doing the scorching hot surface of the sun because everybody thinks Australia is a hot desert. Couldn't be further from the truth. So let's move on to the next mistake. The fourth mistake that people make is not understanding the problems that arise from trying to crossbreed or breed different species. Now, I'm not talking about health issues with the animal. I'm talking about issues with representation of what your animal actually is. Now, this right here 
is a captive born and bred West Papuan carpet python. But one of the biggest problems that we see as a result of crossing things and not maintaining information is that a lot of these mixes can look somewhat convincingly like pure animals. And without maintaining that information and it's being lost, you technically have an undocumented animal. But oftentimes people get these animals and they don't realize that what they have is like a high percentage Papuan coastal cross. When I was getting into carpets, I made that same mistake. I bought two of them. Just didn't understand what I was doing. So um, I've since rectified that knowledge deficit and uh, I'm, I'm very much into my pure stuff and knowing the lineage. Now this might seem like kind of the first problem we talked about, but it's very different. Um, the problems that arise aren't necessarily health with the animals, but just getting bad results. You'll get animals that nobody wants, don't have any project value, and are frankly not going to be that attractive. You can't beat a pure, beautiful West Poplin carpet because frankly there's so many different color types and palettes and everything. As soon as you start muddying that, you don't have anything special. Don't do that. Please don't do that. For the love of God, everybody in Morelia has spent years trying to maintain these lines, trying to keep things documented and valuable. And uh, so many people just don't understand it without trying really undo a lot of this important work that people are trying to do because inevitably that information gets mixed up passed on and, and newcomers and new keepers see the the cheap value on a mutt and they don't know any better and they just see an affordable snake and then they get off on the wrong foot too so problem number four is not paying attention to what you're breeding and knowing the problems that arise when you're crossbreeding hybrids are bad but that's just my opinion but for real, I'm not a hybrid fan. Don't do that. Now, the fifth and final problem. All right, so the fifth and final problem that most people uh, make mistakes with is not valuing the lineage of certain animals. Um, in fact, because these animals come from Australia, Australia has closed its borders for import and export of its native fauna for decades. So what we have here is what we have here. It's finite. Even if we get stuff from Europe, that's finite. There are no new bloodlines of things coming in. Um, so what you have is what you have. And as soon as you squander it, uh, muddy it up, cross it with something, you can't make it pure again. You can't take a jungle, breed it to a coastal, and subsequently put more jungle down the generation and wind up with pure. That's just not how it works. Once it's crossed, it's crossed. So all the folks like Nick Mutton, who produced this beautiful jungle, who has decades and generations of lineage, all that hard work would be for naught. So definitely value that information because once it's gone, it's gone. Alrighty, so that about wraps up the five main pitfalls that I see people making when dipping their toes into carpet pythons. Um, it's definitely a learning curve. We all make mistakes and I've made plenty of these myself. But definitely do your research, definitely talk to other people involved in Morelia that can kind of give you those subtle insights that you won't find in a book. Um, the books are crucial because they have some invaluable insight into husbandry and history and all of the, the specifics that break up this group of, uh, of animals that we love known as the, the genus Morelia. So definitely don't sleep on them. They're some of the best snakes for pretty much anybody. They're sizes, shapes, and colors for everybody out there so get yourself some carpet pythons learn the history learn the lineage learn all of that good stuff and uh and don't feel uh don't feel overwhelmed it's a lot it takes time to learn but there's good folks out there that are happy to teach you if you're willing to listen so uh without further ado i'm going to say thank you for yet again putting up with another week off for me uh, i'm just kind of burning the candle at both ends here so hoping to uh get back on track here and keep going with these weekly weekly reptile videos and trying to keep it somewhat Morelia focused. Well, I'll catch you all next week. Hope you're uh, having a good one, staying warm out there for everyone who's enduring all the snow. And uh, I will catch you all next week for some more Carpet Python talk. Peace!